Um, thank you. Oh. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming along to this uh, really, I think, historic meeting um, where we're, you know, we, we've got Mark Stanley here to answer your questions on the open source future of, of Shopware and what they're, what, what they're thinking is straight from the horse's mouth. Before... <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, I should also mention he will be hosted by Sander Mangle, who will be sort of managing the, the question and answer session that will happen after I um, make it, have a few words about Shopware United first, the inevitable um, sort of uh, <laughs> promotional uh, second. Um, I want to tell you that most of you, I hope, know who Shopware United are. Um, but uh, we want to tell you a little bit about that. We want to tell you about some events coming up. We want to tell you about the community directory, which I think is very exciting. And only then will we release Mark Stanley uh, uh, for your delectation. How do we get this one to go to the next one? Um, so those of you, the, the Shopware United, Shop, well, what is Shopware United? We are an international uh, uh, board that manages events and with the aim of just empowering global community and open collaboration. Um, I'll take you through some of the stuff we do in a second. All you what you really need to know is if you have a problem or you have an event to promote or something that you need uh, within the community, come and talk to us. We are here to represent and help you in any way we can. <clears throat> so what do we do? Uh, we uh, run a, a, a range of online events. We um, do some things like Coffee and Learn. We run a community voice project. We do some community breakfast and developer brunches. Uh, seems the developers prefer brunch and the commercial guys prefer breakfast. Don't know what that's about. Um, we, <clears throat> we promote any community and shopware events that are happening. So we're here to help amplify any events that you guys might be running or Shopware themselves might be running. Um, we also provide, thanks to Herbie, uh, who's, who's, uh, who works full-time for Shopware United, a community digest that takes you through all the important news and thinking that's been going on within the Shopware um, community. To get that, all you need to do is go and sign up at www.shopwareunited.com. Um, we also run a load of uh, offline events. We run a sort of Hello Shopware Day events. We run a lot, um, those, we've had those in Belgium recently. We've got one coming up in Netherlands, which I'll tell you about in a second. Um, Germany, uh, Poland, and we've had one in the UK and we're having we've, a couple in the US as well. Um, we also run a number of uh, in-person meetups and pre-events. We just had one. I hope some of you were there uh, at the Webwinkel Vakdaven uh, on Monday night, uh, where <clears throat> some very kind sponsors uh, provided um, um, uh, drinks for anyone in, for anyone the day before the Bevinkel fucked up, which I think was a great success. We run uh, a lot of these types of events, both with um, with topics to discuss and uh, around to provide meetup type facilities. You know, at major trade shows, trade shows. So, what have we got co coming? Two things are coming up. Uh, please sign up. You can see you can see those details at shopwareunited.com slash events. Um, a community breakfast on the 23rd of Feb. Um, we're talking about uh, something that I'm going to tell you about in a second. Uh, we're talking about the, this community directory project that we're starting. And then if you are in the Netherlands area uh, or, you know, somewhere near or you want to come along, there's a Hello Shopware event in Rotterdam in on the 19th of March. <clears throat> One thing, there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about. First of all, is the, um, the Solution Specialist Project, which is a major project we undertook last year. Um, some of you will have been involved in it and you submitted questions, but we created an agenda, a whole syllabus around it. Uh, we collected questions from the community. We still support this qualification that's been launched now by Shopware. Um, and we're organizing and delivering some workshops to help people get through this exam. We think this, uh, solution specialist project is really important as it uh, it delivers a a qualification for the 
the 70% of every e-commerce project that goes nowhere near a developer. So your project managers, your sales guys, your commercial uh, people, your account managers, uh, all of these can now do a qualification that really grounds them properly in the Shopware platform, Shopware ethos, how to configure it and how to best deliver it for, their cust for your customers. Finally, uh, th the final thing I want to talk about before we hand over is the Shopware Community Directory project. This is this year's big project, um, as far as we're concerned. The Shopware United Community Directory is open to all, as long as you can show that you are involved in the Shopware ecosystem in any way. So, um, so we expect freelancers or app and extension developers, consultants, third-party technology platforms with inter you know, with, that are integrating to Shopware, all of you can get a listing in a community directory, initially completely free. I have to say initially because at a later date, there may be a paid element. We, we, we intend to keep a completely free element, um, but uh, there may be a paid element for things like backlinks from the directory to your site. I've just put this up here because most of you will have a mobile phone. So get it out, point it, your camera at that QR code, and that will take you to somewhere where you can register your interest for this hasn't signed you up you know you're not you're not committed but we want to know um that you're interested so there's a url there as well De go to that url submit your details we will then send you a login where you can develop a listing should you want to but please um uh, register your interest for this community directory project we think it's really interesting we think it's it's, it's something that can really really supercharge our community efforts um a few you know obviously here um are a few ways you can get hold of us the usuals i think i don't think um, they're all available at shopwayunited.com uh, you can see them you can also see a few of who's on the board uh of shopway united if you are interested in contributing to the shopware community do get hold of us we want we want people who want to contribute uh, to the Shopware community. And we want to get you involved in the way that best suits you. So if you are interested, drop us a line, come and have a, have a chat with us, and, and we'd love to find out how we could help each other. And now, without further ado, uh, I want to introduce, well, actually, I'll probably hand over to Sander to introduce the main event for tonight, the legend that is Mark Stanley. All yours, Sander. Very, thank you very much, Justin. Thank you for uh, for getting us through that. Uh, yeah, it's it's my pleasure um, today to introduce Mark Stanley, He's Chief Product and Technology Officer at Shopware since last year, March, um, and he brought someone along, uh, Moritz uh, Nachensky, uh, who is the Director of Product Discovery for the last. Uh, uh, Ten and a half years he has been at Shopper, a little bit longer than uh, than Mark, um, and they will both be answering uh, all our questions about open source, of which I I have a list that was uh, pre-submitted through the forum. Uh, thank you very much for getting involved. Once we are done with those questions, uh, we'll also open up the chat for for further impromptu questions. So if you have a question, uh, maybe save it until the last moment and then pop it in the chat. It it'll also be easier for me to go uh, to go through them. Um, but let's first get started uh, with the questions that were pre-submitted. Um, let's let's start with a, a succinct one, which is uh, when to. Um... Yeah. I'm just thinking, should I start by introducing myself a bit? Ah, sure, that? yeah, please. I do. <laughs> yeah, so hi, you I'm serve Mark. the host, why don't you? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, Sander. Um, yeah, so I'm Mark. Uh, thanks for the very dramatic uh, introduction there, Justin, as well. Um, uh, I've been with Shopware for um, coming up to 11 months now, uh, so started in March. Um before that, I worked for um, uh, an education company called Education First, and uh, we built a lot of software um, and sort of education platforms for teachers to teach students in various different countries around the world, including China, South America, Europe, to learn different languages, particularly like English, French, uh, German, Swedish, Spanish, Italian, so mostly e-fixed languages. Um, 
So education is a big passion of mine. Um, and uh, particularly also empowering trainers and teachers for how to get directly connected um, and how to, you know, create compelling content that's interactive and help further learning through um, machine learning and, and data, et cetera. Uh, before that, uh, I spent maybe about 15 years in the video games industry. Um, started off working at uh, Sony um, in uh, Soho in London. Uh, my first kind of big gig really was working on SingStar, where I ran the uh, engineering team. Um, and we did everything from PlayStation 2 SingStar through to PlayStation 3. And uh, I decided not to do the uh, PlayStation 4 ver version of SingStar. But that was um, uh, really uh, a very exciting time because when we did the, the um, PlayStation 3 version of SingStar, uh, we were able to connect to the internet and we created our own community, uh, which was my SingStar Online, where you could upload videos. Um, I learned a hell of a lot about moderation very quickly. Um, but, you know, it was uh, a lot of good fun and we put our own store and products and things like that. Uh, I then went on to work on um, PlayStation VR um, and we did a lot of um, underlying tools and tech. I was a developer for many, many years. Um Sorry, if you wouldn't mind muting, uh, that would be helpful. Thank you, uh, Lorenzo. And um, then I went uh, on to work at Xbox, uh, where we did uh, a whole bunch of free-to-play games, um, which was more of a sort of retail model. But it was very interesting to learn about how to motivate people to uh, want to pay for something which is essentially free. So, you know, it's a, it's a very different way of thinking. Um and then I also did a whole bunch of work on HoloLens and 3D as well. So um, I'm kind of keen to see, you know, what we can what we can do here at Shopware to be very developer centric, developer first, um, but also create sort of engaging um, experiences for for our Shopware shoppers. Ultimately, at the end of the day, does that make sense? Yeah, especially exciting to hear that you're a big fan of uh, of education. Um, uh, Academy is dear to my heart, I dare to say. So, uh, of course. Uh, uh, I hope we can drive that uh, in in the year to come. Um, yeah. So, so just a small round reminder for everyone: keep yourself muted uh, unless there is something uh, to say, and let's uh, uh, keep the question until the last moment. Um, Boris, do you want to give a, a short introduction on 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 your position, uh, what you, what you're doing on a daily basis? Yeah, sure, can also do that. I think some of the people here already also were well, at least in one or more uh, direct conversations with me in the past years. So I'm Moritz. Um, as Sander already said, more than ten years at Shopware, uh, started working in support and also was responsible for the support team for a long time, and then somehow moved over to product over time. And uh, my current position is uh, responsible for product management. And I always say that I'm the one that needs to make sure that we are addressing the needs of our customers uh, with our product. And with customers, I also mean like developers, partners, and not exclusively merchants. So all of the users that are interacting with our software. That's the, the shortest way I can do. Yeah. Thank you, Moritz. Thank you. Um... Yeah, maybe let's uh, let's dive into the questions. Um, of course, they were very uh, open source themed. Um, we will go through all of them. I bundled some of the questions that were submitted, so um, you might not hear your specific question that you submitted, but but it is in there. Um, so first of all, uh, a very succinct one: um, What is the future of open source for? Uh, for Shopware, especially the community edition? Um, uh, is is there a future? Uh, is the community edition here to uh, here to stay? Um, Mark, do you want to kick this one off? Yeah, sure. I mean, one hundred percent. I mean, it's the beating heart of everything we do. Um, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to be part of Shopware and Shopware's journey is because I'm passionately open um, in my core to open source software. I think it's a super powerful thing. I think it's great for observability and trust um and i th and you know it is the, the the heart of everything we do here at shopware so it is very much here to stay 
Uh, one of the first things we did when I started that Moritz and I worked on was putting together our top five customer promises. And, you know, you can kind of think of those as being sort of set in stone. Those are our values. Those are the things that we care about. Those are the things that we promise to, um, sorry, some people are messaging me. I'll minimize that. Um, these are the things we promise to everybody internally and externally. And our number one customer promise is, um, you know, open source, open adoption, community-led open source adoption. It is the beating heart of everything we do. It's not going anywhere. We are going to continue to invest in it. If you're interested in our other uh, customer promises, it's essentially outstanding shopping experiences. That's putting the shopper front and center and looking and feeling future first. It is about being easy to integrate and run fast. And so for me, that's everything to do with onboarding, education, unboxing, making it easy to integrate into whatever stack that you need to work with, making sure the, so the, the, the software is performant, um, it's not taking up unnecessary resources, you know, all of those sorts of things. The next one is automation. Uh, automation of, uh, of, of activities is probably a bit more merchant centric, but you know, we want to be able to deal with scale. We want to be able to go from, you know, small shops to enterprise grade uh, setups. And we want to make sure that everything is automated in a reasonable manner. And lastly, our fifth customer promise is data and AI stickiness. Uh, this is really around retention, retention of shoppers, making sure that we can provide really cool features that uh, are engaging and want shoppers to come back uh, time and time again to uh, our stores, basically. So yes, it is central to everything we do. And we even have a mantra inside of Shopware, which is more Shopware everywhere. And that really is, you know, based on the open approach. And I can see Moritz laughing at that because we had fun with that at our annual kickoff. Moritz, really? do you want to add anything? I think it was a good summary. So I I would say the central uh, sentence we really more shopware everywhere, and we see the also the community edition as really big advantage to get a reach in the market. Also in, in like the growing markets we have like the US and so on. It's a it's like the the base of everything we are doing because um, without the reach behind all of our community editions and our biggest bigger community, um, it's hard to achieve also all the other goals that are on uh, on top of that. Perfect. Um, I think, Mark, one thing that you, you mentioned that I want to uh, m maybe dig into because that was something that did come up in, in the questions submitted was um, investing in the community. And I think this this one is maybe inspired by uh, the previous uh, Shopper Community Day where we saw that the dev track was a little bit smaller than than we're uh, used to, uh, maybe some some uh, less hackathons than, than we're used to. So, what is the policy on on investing in the community? Yeah, I mean, it, we're, we're going to make sure we do much better. And, you know, SCD this year, we're going to have a full fat developer day, and developer track. In fact, actually, um, folks in the team are going to start reaching out to the community for suggestions for talks and things that people might want to contribute. You know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, we uh, we we have three primary customers at Shopware, developers, merchants, and shoppers, and they are all equal. So we need to make sure that going forwards, it is also visibly equal to everybody too. So yes, we will continue to invest and we're gonna do more things. Morris, is there anything you wanna to add to that? Also a good summary, I would say. I think um, also like the engagement with, um, the broader community, we are also planning a um, customer um, advisory event uh, in, in March. We are doing a customer bar camp in March. So also bringing um, people together and looking into uh, their thoughts and their requirements for the product and so on. So I think having a, a good plan how to connect with the community on a regular basis is uh, something we really want to figure out. Right, so so making sure that we that the chopper reaches more people uh, now across two continents, I think that that also comes with some challenges, maybe even three already. Um, but but going more into the into the community. Yep, we're planning a European roadshow for this year. 
um, getting more touch points, um, also speaking to folks that we may not have spoken to before. I think that's also important. We want to bring uh, more people into the tent and also looking at uh, a US roadshow as well, um, predominantly more agency focused initially, of course, but uh, that, that will also be there to kind of bootstrap um, as well. So yes, much more to come. All right, brilliant, exciting. Um, on that community edition, you say more software uh, everywhere. I think a, a good chunk of that would be community edition installs, uh, uh, I, I reckon. Um, what came up in, in some of the questions is that, 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 that there is this perception um, that, that the shopper sales department does see community edition as a as a competitor. Um, what are your thoughts, uh, both you and Moritz, uh, as a as a as a um, product organization on the positioning of community edition? When to choose community edition and when to go for that rise uh, license rule? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think when I first started in March, there was definitely a little bit of a, li a little bit of friction around that. But um, I think that's all kind of now been fully resolved internally. And I think that, you know, obviously salespeople have got particular things that they want to do. But fundamentally, it's us in product. We own the community edition. It is ours. We're the ones that talk about it. We're passionate about it. Uh, we, we want to push it you know, every single way that we can. And of course, you know, we have an extension system, an extension store, which is monetized. And so it essentially finances the community edition uh, indirectly. So it is a super valuable part of our history and a super valuable part of our setup. Um, and with our sort of gradual evolving into more of a product-led approach uh, for how we want to grow in the future through more shopware everywhere, um, you know, those kind of small conflicts of interest are basically now starting to move away and the sales team are fully on board with the value of the community edition. So I don't see that. Um, and I haven't seen that for a while now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think so. Uh, Moritz, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, just don't, I, I don't want to repeat everything Mark said. Yeah. Over and over again, I think it's normal that also salespeople are incentivized in some kind of way in selling stuff. So I think that's no wonder that they at least have an eye more on how they are they can sell commercial plans. But as Mark said, I would also agree to the the community edition is the product of our product yeah. organization, and we are the ones that need to drive the community edition yeah. and the reach of the community edition. And that's a, that's something where we all up for and uh, are are like have yeah. written down our signature too. Yeah. yeah. And and, and f f for your feeling modes, because you have 10 years of experience in shopper, and I think that that, that, that needs to be recognized. Uh, have you seen a big difference uh, over, over those 10 years? I mean, you started before uh, uh, in the uh, the Iron Cube era, right? I mean, uh, and and then everything got, got open sourced. Um, between this first initial moment where it got open sourced and 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 where we are today with community edition, uh, do you do you see it? has it has the interest waned or do you still still think there's a, a huge uh, um, focus on community internally? Um, I would say um, from the organizational so which which departments are invested in which topic there have hasn't changed much because it was always the case that our sales department is more invested into the paid. Uh, commercial uh, commercial editions. I think, th think that's that they are reason to be there. So to to do sales probably healthy um, and yeah, for sure. I think where we need to get better, and that's also something Mark said earlier, is uh, to make sure that we as product can also provide the knowledge and everything that is at hand to make sure that also the community edition can be something that is um, self sustainable and also have um, like give 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 the people everything at hand that they can be successful with the community edition, because it's for sure more the self service part than uh, you have someone at hand that can take over uh, can lead you through everything because like that's something where most of uh, the people need to be paid for so I think that's but yeah but that's where we as product organization are invested in and getting better and providing more resources for that. Yep, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 
looking at and at community edition and 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 its feature set how does shopware decide what feature is is community what feature goes into into any of the paid plans um and will new features inherently come more into paid plans or will it still be a a balance of of the two yeah i mean you know f first things there's no kind of like grand or valian plan around what is in and what is out and what is the meaning i mean it it really is very much bottoms up in shopware so you know people come up with ideas uh they want to go and you know it's one of the great things about working in software and if you ask me that we basically come up with ideas we speak to people uh we speak to customers we speak to developers uh we think hey this is a great idea and then it sort of makes its way into the product and away you go um <clears throat> i would say when we generally talk about these things and figure out where things would go, the natural home for community edition is things that are developer focused, things that are going to make it smaller, better, faster, um, <clears throat> easier to work with. You know, uh, if we want to add caching layers, we want to improve the technology. Of course, this is where, you know, we want to put uh, all of that technical knowledge and expertise into the community edition. There are other areas, though, where, you know, we think something's going to be, you know, big in the future. We want it to be part of the community. So spatial commerce, I think, is a really good example of that. You know, we we recently uh, put uh, the ability to have 3D uh, in um, shopware. And, you know, we consciously made a decision. We want that to be part of the open core. Um, 3D has become more and more successful in the last five or six years years i would say because of the Cronus group because of gltf and glb because before then it was the wild west and you had you know fbx files if anyone's ever worked with them they're absolutely atrocious and you know working with the fbx sdk is like awful so i think you know and actually at my time at microsoft i was part of um pushing um gltf as an open standard with the Cronus group so so that for me is the natural home, right? It's an open standard, it's open source, and therefore it makes sense to be part of our open source core core too. Um, so that, that those are the kind of thought processes we have around how where where we yeah. want to put things. And uh, I think you hit there on a on an important note, right? That that um, uh, shopware's uh, contribution to open source is maybe not just a community edition that that is free and and on GitHub. But it's also its involvement in in new open source standards such as for for spatial commerce. Uh, I know there are ongoing conversations with with Symphony and 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 other technologies that are open source that that Shopper benefits from. Uh, I I know there are some contributions uh, there as well. So I think that that whole uh, open source philosophy is is I guess broader than just a community edition. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, it's about observability and trust, right? Yeah, and definitely. And so on, on the shopper core, um, how is that going to evolve uh, over the next few years? Especially, uh, I think Composable uh, w will stay a, a topic. Um, what are some of the focus points, maybe more on the architectural level uh, for the shopper core? Yeah, I mean, our, our primary um, lens that we see these things through is, is performance, right? We want to make sure a shopware store can go from a very small customer uh, and small throughput and, and um, uh, usage to very, very large, you know, enterprise grade size, right? We, we want to be able to be part of that journey. You know, ultimately, we don't want people to have to feel that they need to replatform you know, every three or four years, we want to be part of that kind of cradle to the grave journey and show that we're innovating, improving, and that we can be trusted to do a good job ultimately and not fuck everything up, right? That's the kind of main goal because it's about trust. So, you know, as you go along that journey to being able to handle, you know, millions of transactions every day, of course, you, you have to start thinking about performance. And that means we need to start separating concerns you know, what are the things that shoppers, when they visit a site, what are they touching? You know, what is the data that's being queried against it? How do we decouple it from other things? 
you know, what parts of the data layer do we want to kind of think about separating? You know, what what is that journey? So those are the things that we are actively talking about. We'll be talking more about at SCD. Folks like Oliver or Sonar, who you may know, you know, the these are the problems that those guys are kind of actively thinking on. And we do not want to do anything in some sort of giant surprise. Nobody likes giant surprises. We'll be publicly talking about everything every step of the way, and it will be, you know, a series of gradual improvements and iterations. It will be, you know, a uh, an intelligent design of iterational improvements rather than some big rewrite, which we're not going to do. Yeah, especially the backwards uncompatible surprises are the ones that uh, that our community tends to not <laughs> be a big fan about. Uh, I can confirm that. Um, on that note, Moritz, uh, we have a new release candidate uh, for 6.6. .6. What are some of the features that you're excited about that are in there? Yeah, So I would say always the major versions like 6.6 .6 are more the ones where we clean up stuff, we are updating libraries, we are like doing the, I would say, the developer work to make sure that we are future proof uh, on a technical basis. So um, one important update is the Vue 3 update we are um, publishing with the, with the version, where for sure it brings also some breaks with it, but also some technology advantages in the future because it's the newest um, uh, Vue uh, update. Um, there's some updates uh, regarding some Symfony, and we did some um, some yeah we removed also some feature flags where we prepared some stuff during the year for example like the stock API where we did some uh, more compatible compatibility for integrations especially with ERP systems and so on where we now make it like the normal part of shopware instead of hiding it in the behind a feature flag and also some improvements regarding the JavaScript loading in the storefront so it's more like I would say clean up making sure that we're future proof with the technical basis. And then with the next minor versions coming after the 6.6, .6, we are also introducing new features. Yeah, really cool. So so this is actually a, a, a version that developers should get excited about, right? A lot of new technology. I think the switch from view uh, 2 to 3 is definitely a, a, a big one and one that was uh, a sorely needed, uh, I dare to say. Uh, very nice. Very nice. Um, Maybe switching to some some more uh, uh, existential questions uh, that we we had in there. Um, can open source and SaaS exist together? Does SaaS impact the open source yeah. development plans and the innovation on open source? Mark. Uh, yeah, I mean uh, the the way I think about it is really what what this question about is how does open source and cloud work together, right? And yeah. My answer to that would be many companies have made a ton of successful businesses from running open source software in the cloud for their customers. So I, I don't see the two things as being mutually exclusive. And in fact, if you look at the entire journey of AWS, it pretty much is take something open source, run it in the cloud for customers to make it easier for them to work with it, right? EKS, for example, you know? Yeah. This is just kind of the, the 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 game of the industry we're in. So I think the more that you can help people to abstract away um, levels of complexity, you can enable them to do things in different ways. And 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 really, it's it's about choice. It's about you know uh, uh, an access of unopinionated to opinionated and people can pick and choose where they want to go. It's not like a, um, you're not forcing anyone to go in any particular direction. So the most unopinionated way is the community edition and an open source approach. And then of course you can go into a much more opinionated nature where, you know, SaaS and particularly multi-tenant SaaS is a highly opinionated uh, uh, environment. Yep. But, you know, for example, if you were to do uh, a PaaS approach or whatever, then that's less opinionated. So. For me, it's about customer choice. Customer is always right. Yeah. Maybe because, um, and, uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Just wanted to add, I, I see it also that we are like eating our own dog food because like for the past years, it was always, we have a community edition or a, or a on-prem edition. We throw it over the fence and you are responsible for hosting it somewhere, updating it somewhere. And yeah, you have right. the experience, what can go wrong and what pitfalls are there. Um, but 
we never were in the in the position where we where we we own shops and we are responsible to making sure that we can update them we can operate them we can do maintenance and so on and it all went smooth so it's also helping us to get experience on how shopware is like operated in a productive environment and help like increasing the quality of our software with that so it it has also advantages to be like also a provider of the software and not just throwing it over the fence and be lucky with it. Hundred percent. You got to feel your. You got to feel the pain, in order to know how to fix it. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. And, and would it be fair to say that also that with the introduction of Shopware Compose front ends, so Shopware front ends, there is still commitment to open source, even even when we are uh, when we look at SaaS, right so instead of customizing the back end you would now customize more the front end i guess exactly yeah. it, right. it's just another form of choice basically yeah. we're also yeah. doing the same with apps we provide for example like we recently published our brain tree app we are building so it's also the the other part where like the back end application we're running for one app is also open source because it helps also others to look into it and know how to develop apps in the future and so on. Yeah, yeah that's that's actually fantastic. And um, I guess we can find it on, on GitHub. Yes, uh, was sure, it was shared in the Slack, but we can I, I can send you over the link and maybe you can include it in the summary or whatever. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, and that's actually a great segue into uh, <laughs> into my the, the next question I wanted to uh, pick up. Uh, what's the future of the plugin uh, uh, system? Will that will it uh, exist? Will that live next to apps? Will apps and plugins merge? Uh, what are the plans there? Yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> we're not sort of overly investing in new functionality for plugins we're essentially focusing all of our effort in improving the app system that's where we know we've got to do more work to improve um and you know we ultimately want to get to a situation where uh, all of the different parts of shopware are fully extendable through the app system uh, and also you know we want to get to a part as, as we talked earlier about how to better improve the core and the monolith and how to separate out different data layers you know the app system is of course crucial to that because we need to create a sort of to quote barney strauss drop the c plus plus guy you know an extra layer of indirection uh helps us to address that so what i would say is you know we're not going to take anything away but all of our investment in all the new fancy stuff is going to be app system based yeah, that, Do you want that makes sense. Comment? And I so maybe on that point, uh, what I hear often is is uh, when do we hit uh, feature parity with with the plugin system? I also guess that that wouldn't necessarily be the goal because then you create another plug a plugin system. I I guess what you're looking for is to more or less achieve the same. Uh, but then in a way where it doesn't uh, 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 touch the core, let's say, where it's still backwards compatible. Exactly, right? And all the new stuff that we want to do, like spatial, for example, if people want to write, you know, a, a VR experience for shopping, which, you know, I'd love for somebody to do, you know, that, that would be available through the app system, you know? Uh, we want to, you know, introduce uh, in-app purchases through the app system. We want to... Uh, enable developers to have a more dynamic service oriented way of how they want to run their businesses, new features, new functionalities. It's all going to come to the app system. That's the thing we want to push. And we want to make the app system exciting and, and dynamic. And, and, you know, it's not about creating um, a stick, but it's about creating a carrot and incentive to, you know, help shift the calculus over time um, because ultimately decoupling software is a better way of solving, you know, technical challenges in the future. Moritz, do you want to add anything about that? Yeah, I also think um, you can dif differentiate between something you can offer in the store and something um, you can do in your like on-prem community edition on your own. So I think it's also like Mark said earlier, in terms of op how opinionated the solution is you want to have. And if you go for a community edition, it's a symphony way to extend shopware also over PHP, and that's not nobody is going to take away that. 
and you can always do that, but it comes also with some some disadvantages where we can also break something, and that's maybe then the way to go for the app system because I know it's more opinionated. It limits it limits yourself in some areas, but it also has advantages in terms of like breaking changes, updates, how it can be maintained, and that all that stuff. And that's something you also need to find out what you need in the project and how uh, where you want to host it and so on. And that's something we can take away from you. Yeah, very much, very much. All right. Um... I have three more uh, questions. These are a little bit more, uh, uh, let's say, random. Uh, so we'll do a, a quick fire round on 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 this. First one: uh, Stack Overflow versus Slack. Uh, we we got quite a few remarks that while well, Slack is is great, uh, data tends to get lost there, right? After I think two weeks uh, or uh, x number of messages, we we lose questions and answers. W what is the direction we want to go there? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm always open to hearing what people think about this. Um, you know, in my experience, there's never really a silver bullet for any of these particular things. Um, you know, we've talked internally about, you know, where do we actually want to have a home for the community? Is it in Slack? Is it here? Is it there or whatever? Um, you know, the reality is right now we have, you know, a, a certain size and a certain traction inside Slack. And so moving everybody is also another challenge yes. so you know i think that you know these things are good at what they do for their particular things that they do do so maybe we just need to get better at making sure that we can cross reference and share links and, and make it easier to index um but yeah i'm kind of open to ideas it's 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 one of those things where you know one group of people have one set of an opinions and another group of people have another set of opinions and everybody always has an opinion about this, but there never seems to be this kind of uh, magic solution. Moritz, what do you think? I also think in the last 10 years, we had like three solutions at least. So we started with IRC, then we had something based on, I think GitHub, or I don't know exactly how, how the name was. And now we are at Slack and it was never the, the best solution for, for, for everything. So there were always reasons why we changed it. And there might be also reasons why Slack isn't the best choice. But I think for now, um, it will stay that way and we're open for like for always to discuss that um but as mark said i think maybe it's also a good choice that we all uh, try to foster activity on tech overflow for example by guiding the people there helping them um to post their stuff there uh, when it's too long for just an art slack like answer uh, i know like this shop six channel there are a lot of stuff that i think isn't feasible for slack but sometimes it's also easier to get a short answer in like because there are a lot, lot of people online there are a lot of people engaging with all the questions there um so i don't think you can just change the the chat way so open for discussions if there's a better solution we can do yeah i would be up for bringing irc back by the way that would be great it's um i, I miss like I, I don't know what it is but you know sometimes i send uh text-based emojicons to people and they they just don't know what they are <laughs> Sorry, my age. Yes, yes age gap indeed. Um, right, next question. It has been remarked that um, shopper support uh, sometimes closes bug reports with a message that uh, a bug will not be uh, solved uh, as, as the roadmap is prioritized. Uh, how is shopper support balancing uh, fixing bugs over uh, roadmap and, and, and what have you? Yeah. You know, bugs is always a hot potato issue, right? And it's always um, um, controversial. Um, you know, I, I can remember one particular game I worked on. We were probably about, you know, two months out from having to have it done and submitted. And there must have been about 20 or 30,000 bugs still left on the board. And it was a, uh, <clears throat> a lot of late nights and a lot of uh, pulling hair out in order to try and you know, squash as many of them as possible. Um, <clears throat> you know, what I would say is we've um, we've done a lot of work recently, uh, probably from about November onwards, to really start revamping our bug process and how we think about them and what we're doing. We're actually in the middle of doing a bug bash right now, uh, where we're trying to sort of, you know, really get under the skin and clear out a lot of the 
backlog of bugs that have just been following us around. Um, and we want to put in place um, a new system so that it is sustainable. In other words, you know, the number of bugs are not increasing. It is uh, either, you know, plateauing or trending down ideally. But, you know, actually we started the bug bash on Monday and already we've managed to get a hundred off the list. So, you know, all I would say is watch this space. Uh, we are doing better at fixing bugs. Yeah, yeah clear. And I, I might imagine that some bugs are also close because it is known that there might be a refactor upcoming or uh, or something like that, right? Yeah, exactly. I think you, uh, you won't never, there will never be a place in time where we can fix everything, but um, you need to make sure that you fix the right ones and also have a right discussion about the right ones. So, and that's the, uh, that's the things where we want to improve and we are also improving, I would say. All right. Thank you. Um, last one. This is uh, not an open source question, but a question about transparency, I guess. Um, will Shopper provide clear pricing for paid plans for customers instead of offering individual pricing after after a long quoting process? It would help agencies in their sales process. I guess you two might not be the best persons to ask it, but I'm, I'm just going to pose the question anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, we, we get this uh, quite a lot. Um... You know, it's my understanding of it is, and I think probably the best approach is our sales team are very keen to listen, learn, be part of the process and figure out what is the best choices for our customers um, and to really kind of be on that journey and figure out the ICP. And I think that's why they've made a very conscious effort to make it probably a more heavyweight process than it might need to be, but to make it much more personal and people orientated. Yeah, to make, to make sure we um, that the client in the end pays for something that they actually need. Uh, right. Exactly. Makes sense. All right. Uh, I am at the end of uh, of the the submitted questions. Uh, I'd like to open up the chat for any questions that that the audience might uh, might have. Please uh, pop them in there. And maybe while we do that, um, Mark, anything, any projects on on product that you're excited about for this year? Anything that you're looking forward to? Uh, yeah, there, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff that, um, we're super excited about. Um, one of them is we're calling the, uh, developer experience. Um, this is really around us bringing together, you know, many parts of our, uh, developer story and developer toolings into think of it sort of wrapping everything up in a bow, making everything coherent and together, uh, as one developer experience platform. Um, and so this is going to be end to end, not just about our documentation, but also how to spin up environments, how to uh, um, work with the app system, uh, how to work with the uh, Figma design system, uh, composable front ends, uh, Meteor. So we're going to start wrapping it all up under this, the, the, the Meteor label and so start bringing everything together. You know, so it's just it just all feels like one thing. You don't have to go touch something over here to do something or something over here to do something or something over here. So that I think is something that we're um, very excited about. All right, great. Um, I have a question uh, from SFX uh, online. Uh, German, I hope I pronounced it right. Um, I still see dangerous conflicts of interest and blockers if we decide to work with CE. Shopper sales staff have hinted that more features should be taken out of the community edition. When we use CE for our projects, how sure can, can we be that crucial features aren't being taken away? Uh, and then maybe a second question is, are plugin developers penalized when they supply plugins to replace professional features? Um, so maybe adding uh, to that. So for example, dynamic access, form builder, what have you. Um, yeah. Will will there be um, features that are 
currently in community edition that might disappear? I think that is the, the main question. Um, not that I know of or, pl or planning. I mean, I don't think it's kind of a good approach to take things away and, you know, you know, have a, a thought process where it's about denying. Um, for me, it's all about making sure that we can create clear blue water between, you know, what is part of the community edition, which is developer centric, and then what are part of our plans that are essentially a motivating factor for people to upgrade. Um, and you know, if the uh, if... hold on, could you please mute? Thank you. Sorry, Mark. yeah. And so, so from my perspective, it's about what are the kind of cool things that we can put into uh, Rise, for example, that really you know differentiates it and makes it a compelling thing for merchants to upgrade. All right. That's that's good to hear. Uh German, did did that answer your question? You, you may unmute to to say yes or yes, partially it did. Uh the, the slight issue that we kind of have that some of the customers we represent or we work with uh still um struggle to actually make it into rise or to afford rise. And yeah. and so far rise indeed is not a to me is not an attractive plan. It kind of starts being attractive. Uh, with the, the evolve plan and then the the gap from what they used to pay in the past um, or what small merchants can afford um, if they didn't have to jump onto a regularly priced evolve plan is, is is just too much for some of the clients that we deal with um, and so the in order to have a, a, a vibrant and and living community edition um, I think a community track for some features is still essential. Fancy stuff like AI or whatever is cool for paid plans, but indeed at the moment, not really relevant for that custom audience. So that's really something, the fancy shit uh, I'm happy to see in the, in the paid plans, the essentials like uh, custom individual pricing, uh, dynamic access, that is such just stuff that people are used to and and we really lose face at the moment if suddenly we have to spend fortunes on developments or plugins uh, in order to to um, get rid of some categories and to show uh, different pricing to different customer groups that's kind of the background background yeah makes sense okay sounds good um morris do you have a view on some of those features that german talked about <laughs> yeah i think it's um it depends always on a use case for, for, for example, for your customer specific pricing, I wouldn't agree that it's something that's basic functionality because I see hundreds of thousand shops that don't need that functionality. But I think that's something you can always argue about. Um, customer groups um, is more relevant, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And um, for example, customer group pricing can you already do with the community edition. That, that's something we can do with advanced pricing already. Um, the dynamic access. Okay, dynamic. Yeah, I, I agree that um, we had that functionality in Shopify Five. Uh, I know that, um, and that's also something we are looking into, um, especially because we are also refactoring factoring a lot of caching stuff in the future. We are also um, the whole dynamic access stuff is something that comes up again, and how to how it can be solved. There's no promise for yet where where it lands, but I see that um, we also need to find other solutions for that. To be honest, um, I know that some people might might need that, others might not. So I don't think that we are currently in the position where we offer some of the parts as, like, as you say, a la carte menu in the store or something like that. So that's currently not planned, but something I would at least say, um, we're always open for uh, discussions in the future to think about more about um, a la carte menus in that direction, but nothing planned yet. In, in, in the end, I don't want to drag it out artificially, but uh, in the end, I'm 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 just mostly it boils down to being scared to promise my uh, my customers a, um, a software that is is currently community edition and that that promises uh, a certain set of feature, which is fairly okay at the moment. At the moment, we can probably replace everything with plugins that we need and and to cover most projects. 
but I'm just not sure, and I've, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how much we can uh, trust at the moment that it's still going to be there in two years' time, um, or if the the on costs in replacing certain features are just going to be too much for some clients once we've started into a new project. Uh, that is more a question of how you get there. So um, we can just assure you that we don't not, don't don't want to take something away. But what, what will help you to get there that you have the certainty or clarity on that? Um, what is it? Sorry, go ahead, Cameron. Dif diff difficult question. That, that was a question. Did I understand that correctly? What, what yeah. would help us? It's hard. It's it's just the, the uncertainty that sales have created in the, in the recent um, months. Uh, where where um, there was no clarity about pricing, and and even the the, the the plans for existing customers have been been changed and and now discontinued. There are talks of of feature freezes and stuff, and that all adds to not being able to calculate at the moment. So yeah. I can't really um, answer that question. It is um, we, we we need reliability, and. Yeah. And, and see that it stays reliable and that it becomes more open and that um, plugin developers are uh, encouraged to even maybe compete a little bit with paid plans. What what I can offer you always is let's get an exchange with each other. Maybe we can do a one-on-one -on -one in one of the upcoming weeks and speak a little bit more in detail about what your current challenges are and so on. So just drop me a message in Slack and I'm always happy to to have more like face-to-face -face sessions and know what's going on because I, I always say that's, that's part of my job to know where people are, are like are having challenges and how to solve them. So that's what I can offer for now. Yeah. Perfect. Cheers. All right. Thank you. Um, so the next one comes from Uwe. Um, you mentioned uh, exciting new features in the in the app system. Uh, have you already seen any significant significant changes in the in the app system? So so uh, maybe something that you tried before that didn't work out. Uh, something refactored. Something maybe towards performance that that was uh, uh, taken in different direction. I mean, uh, what I would say is it's the app system in terms of you know overall maturity is still in its early days basically so there's often a bit of churn uh and and how things chop and change um the main push that we are really doing now is we are starting to you know more build our own apps for this whole dog fooding reason um, you know, we want to make sure, and Braintree is just the, the most recent one that we've done, but we want to start implementing uh, more of our own apps just to make sure that we can really start stress testing the system. Um, so, you know, we, we're, we're spinning up a team on that in Q2. And uh, the intention is, is that, you know, over the next year, it will further accelerate the app system, its capabilities, its reliability, and the things that you can extend through it. Um, so that's really the kind of commitment that we're putting in place for the app system as a whole. But for specific examples, I don't really have any uh, ones at hand. Uh, Moritz, do you have any? I think um, where I see uh, most of the adoption happens is in the payment area because um, we we always, we provided at least two or three apps already for payments. And we also see that a lot of payment providers are adopting uh, payments. So we see that if, as soon as you put effort in producing your own apps and see where people struggle and put something in the app system to fix that, it also helps the adoption of other technology partners going over to that. So I would say, for example, in the payment area, we are already quite quite well um, set up for the app system. In other areas, that's where, where Mark um, was referring to, is that we also need to make sure that we are building something on our own to see where the gaps are and like putting effort in helping to integrate those kind of stuff. Um, so I think that's the more like use case specific um, things we are doing and the overall we are, we are getting a lot of um, requests from plugin manufacturers that want to provide an app and see where they where they are seeing challenges. For example, I know that it was hard to call uh, APIs from the storefront and that's also something we uh, we did in, in one of the recent releases. So 
I know there's a lot of potential when just looking into what where people struggle and where they need to need help. Yeah. All right, thank you. Um, then a question about uh, certification from from Igor. Uh, there's uh, are there any new certifications planned to come out this year? That's a better question for you, isn't it, Xander? <laughs> <laughs> I can't commit to anything. Um, I, I know Academy is 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 working on uh, rebuilding the uh, the developer certifications. Of course, um, Shopper United is heavily involved with the with the solutions architecture ones. Uh, I think the direct question was about apps. Um, I think, as far as I know, that will be rolled into the the the, the developer um, materials, as it's now a fundamental part of um uh of the core uh so that that might not be a separate uh, uh course uh other than that i don't think there are concrete plans yet for for course but it would be interesting to hear any any thoughts about that uh from the community so where there is yeah. a gap it would be interesting to see uh, uh where there, where there is an ask All right. Um, let me see. And last question from Yo. Uh, when comparing the versions on the Shopper homepage, will there be a fourth column for the CE functions? Great idea. Let's do it. Yeah, and that that is the 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 Shopper dot com homepage, not the right. Shopper homepage in the in CMS. Uh, but yeah, that that would be good to to have indeed. Yeah, uh, duly noted. Right. Um, I don't see any more questions. If no one has any more to ask, if everything is clear, if if everyone is satisfied that community is safe in the hands of 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 the product team of Shopware, I think that is an important one. Um, then I would like to uh, thank um, our... Yes. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, fine. Uh, I was <laughs> on a different mic. So <laughs> I have one question. It's not related to open source, but it's a question that uh, a customer of mine is uh, crying since a couple of days as he was reading the roadmap. Um, maybe just as a clarification or um, that I can... Um, bring it to my customer. He has a shop with super rare exotic plants. And once a year, there's a big sale. And then the rest of the year, he is preparing to um, bring the plants to different countries. And um, the one feature, the best feature in Shopper was for him, the calculation of available and the normal stock. And now he was reading through the roadmap and figure out it will be completely gone in 6.6. Six. Is it true? Is it the, just a typo, I hope? Or <laughs> do you have this some some information on this, Moritz? I think that's... Yeah. So we had a lot of struggle with the availability calculation and the actual stock and got a huge amount of feedback that it is really a pain in the ass in most of the projects. And that was the reason to decide against like having this kind of available stock. Um, I need to need to look really into the implementation if it's just a switch, but I guess it's really removing the available stock because we see that most of the times it's handled by the ERP system uh, and not directly uh, by shopware. And um, there might be use case, uh, I, I get your use case uh, and I see that for the, that exact customer, it might be helpful. But overall, it was really that we got a lot of like pushback on that functionality. And we we see that it's more like giving it in the hand of the ones that set up the project, how to handle that. Um, because most of the times there's some third party in stock calculation, um, like just part of it. And then it gets hard to like having something in place that interferes uh, from the core with it. Um, so you was... will completely remove the calculation of stock then in six six, I need or... to look it up exactly how it how it's it's solved. I'm not hundred uh, percent have it in my head, but I know that uh, we have a feature flag that disables the the stock available stock calculation, and that's becoming the new default. 
I'm not 100% sure if it's re removal or just like a switch. I'm guessing it's more like a removal. I, I always hope this is switch because it was then in 6.5, just an option that you can disable. And then I was like, yeah, and no, it's a hardcore. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Um, my, I, in, in my opinion, uh, it will not be uh, removed. Um, there are two uh, um, uh, values for that. One is the real stock and the calculation, and the calculation will be removed, but the stock will be just um, set when you get an order, the stock will be reduced immediately. Not the calculation where the API of the ERP system has to set the order to complete. That's what's said in the 6.6 .6 documentation. So you have a stock, and it will be there will handled, be a, there handled will be still for a stock everyone. Yes. Yeah. There will, it will be handled like for 99% for of the customers as before. But uh, on the other side, there are a lot of customers who don't set this uh, stock or the status of an order and the calculation of the stock will be got, got wrong. That's what the changes in 6.6, in my opinion, what I have read. There's a stock and yeah. you, there's availability, but it was will be calculated on another way. Yeah, I didn't have a chance to try it out with the RC now, but um, that's what I definitely got to check out. Yeah, and basically, if you get stuck, just reach out and we'll figure it out. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Moritz, Mark, I want to thank you so much for, for coming on. Uh, it was very interesting, uh, learned a lot. Um, if people have more questions, what's the best way to, to reach you? Pull requests on GitHub? Yeah, or feel free to email me or whatever, I don't mind. Yeah. I'm also available in Slack, so the easy way is always to drop me a message in the community Slack, and then we'll figure out how to communicate further. All right. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone for, for joining. Uh, send us your feedback on, on this webinar. We would love to hear your thoughts. And until the next time. Thanks everybody. Bye.